Good Thursday afternoon, everyone. It's May the 8th, 2025, and in this weather forecast, we have a serious heat wave coming for the desert southwest, with it even building across the northern plains with temperatures that could break serious records over the next week or so in many places. So in this video, we will be breaking down all those details. Now, taking a look at the very latest GOES satellite imagery here across the lower 48 United States, and we have some pretty active weather taking place today across the midwest the ozarks we have scattered showers and thunderstorms these are severe they will be producing some significant hail some damaging wind gusts and even a tornado and then of course across the deep south here in texas and also for portions there of florida we got also some intense thunderstorm development taking place because of this trough you could see the flow right here it's bending back like this over Texas and the Midwest, and that's increasing convection and lift across the Deep South and the Ozarks. Back here across the West, such as Oregon, Washington, and the Four Corners, looking pretty dry, to say the least. In fact, in my area, it's supposed to be about 89 today, 95 tomorrow, and then possibly close to 100 degrees for Saturday. So yeah, it's going to get seriously hot here in the home weather office over the next couple of days because of big upper level ridging that is going to be building across the west. Now with that being said, here's a look at the latest European model over the next several days here. This is actually for this afternoon and you can see that big trough that we talked about here, this northeasterly flow here, bending back to the southwest across the deep south. You have this trough that is strongly positively tilted, but because of the divergent flow aloft here across the southeast, the Ozarks and the deep south, we are getting lift and convection. Some of those storms are severe and capable of producing significant hail and wind damage for today. And then over here, we have this big upper level ridge over California, and this is going to be influencing the weather for the northern plains and across much of the Intermountain West going forward for Friday and Saturday. So let's put this into motion here for Friday afternoon, and you can see that big ridge of high pressure over Nevada, over the four corners. We're getting into that time of the year now, folks, that the heat is on. And we are going to see temperatures over here in Phoenix, Death Valley perhaps, and Palm Springs up between 105 to 110 degrees. Yeah, uh, time to jump in the pool, right? It's going to definitely be a hot one. Not warm, but hot. And our neck of the woods can be warm here. And then just unsettled weather continuing across the southeast, the eastern seaboard, across the deep south because of that trough, this lift in the atmosphere, just not wanting to go away. In fact, we look to have an omega block that is going to be setting up shop here by Saturday. And you can see that here, big ridge of high pressure over the northern plains, the desert southwest, and that's going to bring in, again, really continuation of really warm temperatures while this trough just likes to hang out for the deep south. Hey, you guys are getting luckier than the areas across the four corners, right? Even so it's muggy, it is cooler after all versus in Phoenix, even um, if you are in Palm Springs, Death Valley. By the way, Death Valley could reach 112 degrees on Friday and Saturday. Just FYI, yeah, it's gonna be very hot there. So if you wanna go to Death Valley and witness that heat, go ahead, be my guest, right? So let's go forward here into Sunday and Monday. Again, very in interesting cutoff flow here. This I, I, I just can't believe it. Doesn't want to go anywhere. Just wants to sit there. And as long as that sits there, you're going to continuation of scene or the continuation of thunderstorms and severe weather and some flood concerns as well with some of the storms. Whereas California will get its own fair share of rainfall by Monday because this upper level trough is going to be increasing lift across the region. Some strong winds across the uh, high deserts as well over Nevada, Idaho, Mon uh, Montana as well, as well as, say, Utah and Colorado because this trough. And this is going to help to increase the onshore breeze over our area. So, yeah, 98 or 96, 97 on Friday and Saturday here down to the upper 60s to lower 70s by Monday. So just in a couple of days, we really turn the corner. In fact, we could drop 30 to almost 40 degrees in some locations just in the matter of about two to three days over the West. And this is going to continue. That trough is pretty dang strong for mid-May. Look at that. Uh, punching into the desert southwest. That's going to help to bring in some needed showers there, some strong winds. That's a guarantee. And then 
The thing about this trough is it doesn't look very dynamic once it ejects into the high plains, but there could be enough lift to at least get something up here across the northern plains because that is, after all, really negatively tilted. We got a nice good ridge here, southwesterly flow, and so, yeah, doesn't surprise me. We, we look to have some active weather there for day seven and day eight perhaps all right with that trough passing its way through and then maybe another trough here by the time we go into day 10 over the high plains and that one will trigger or could trigger a more substantial threat of severe weather which means severe weather is returning beyond the seven day time frame but until then looking pretty chill across much of the lower 48. Precipitation wise well again looking at the European model green areas denote moderate to heavier rainfall lighter greens indicate lighter rainfall all right, and so as we go forward here in time, you can see system moves into the northeast. So yeah, an unsettled Saturday for sure. Gusty winds, you name it. Also for the deep south here, you got some good chances of rainfall there. So if you're in, say, Birmingham, if you're in uh, Mobile, Alabama, as well as central and southern Mississippi like Jackson there, uh, looking at some unsettled weather for your Saturday morning. So yeah, you're not getting rid of any rainfall anytime soon. It looks pretty unsettled there for the next several days. And again, it's because of this upper level low, cold air loft, warmer temperatures at the surface, you increase the instability and in that in the form of moisture, we have plenty of it at the surface. That's why we're going to see some thunderstorms and some of them could be severe for sure, um, uh, especially on Saturday and Sunday. And then going all the way into, say, Monday, the 12th of May, look at just really unsettled, very dreary, just not a good day to walk the dog, to take advantage of the outdoors, just going to be cloudy, gloomy, thundery, showery, that kind of thing. Also in the desert south, or not desert southwest, the Pacific Northwest, we're looking at our own fair share of active weather as that trough that we talked about moves through. And yeah, we could see severe weather here too. At most, probably a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms over the Central Valley. Yeah, it's still kind of that. We're kind of getting into the dry month, or we're pretty much in the dry months, but occasionally we get these passing systems. If there's enough moisture and lift, we can get some thunderstorms in the valley. And it doesn't surprise me if we get one of those days on Monday next week where we need to watch the skies for some small hail, funnel clouds, and some gusty erratic wind gusts. Perhaps that could be damaging, perhaps 40 to 55 miles an hour. Okay, and this continues all the way into uh, Tuesday next week, Tuesday afternoon. Again, still unsettled with that upper level low, just kind of hanging around the area, just just kind of a wash and rinse, repeat, just wet, wet, wet. Also kind of unsettled for California still. And then by Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, there is that severe weather that we are talking about here, potentially on the European model. Uh, again, it's still very far out, but it doesn't surprise me if we get another slight risk out of this in future outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center, especially by day four, day five, and day six, one of those three days, as confidence grows. We'll see about that right now. Confidence is very low for this, so I'm not too concerned about it right now, but it's something to consider after all, this is the peak of tornado season in the high plains this time of the year. And so you don't want to kind of ignore that, oh, it's quiet now, it doesn't last forever, right? By Thursday and Friday, though, it still continues. And then with that next system coming on through here, nice good surface slow. Yep, there it is. There's more showers and thunderstorms through the 18th of May here, and this is just beyond the 10-day forecast. Now, a big thing about this is going to be the temperature is going to be really, really, really warm for many locations. In fact, downright hot. Yeah, enough to jump in the pool, right? So as we take a look at this forecast for from the European model for this afternoon, you can see Phoenix, Arizona in the 90s, but don't let that fool you. It is going to be much warmer tomorrow. Just about anyone here in California Look at this. Um, even some mid-80s in the high deserts here of Nevada, Idaho, as well as Utah. Yeah, that tells you something. It's going to be pretty hot. And then over here in the Central Valley. And yes, I looked at some locations, even at the coasts, we could see temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. San Francisco may break out in the 70s. And more concerningly, Fresno may reach 100 degrees for your Friday. So, yep, early one of the earliest days we get triple-digit heat there 
it's just going to be hot. And then Phoenix, Arizona, um, if you're in Yuma as well, if you're in Tucson, in Palm Springs, Death Valley, right around 100 to 105 for your Friday. But it's only going to get hotter than this as we go into Saturday. Look at this. Saturday's the peak of the heat of just about anyone here. Phoenix getting really hot. And then look at this heat dome over here across the northern plains. Yeah, talk about upper 80s. There might be a 90. There might be a 90 over here in portions of North Dakota and Montana. <laughs> What a change in a few months, right? You guys were just dealing with native temperatures just two or three months ago. Now you're blowing out and blaring into the 90s, perhaps for Saturday. 70s down here in Texas, so nice and cool. And then nice and cool over here. Wow. Atlanta, Georgia might be in the 50s. How about that for your Saturday? Yeah, actually, no, not. Well, that's when the thunderstorms actually come in, but before that, probably into the low to mid 60s. How oh, cooler there than it is in the northern plains. And this continues all the way into the weekend, where, I mean, look at this overnight lows here in the mid to upper 60s in the Dakotas. That's a pretty uh, decent heat dome. And then maybe some low to mid 90s there in the Dakotas and, uh, and Minnesota for your Sunday. Still very hot there for the desert southwest. And it just, look at this, overnight lows here may be breaking into the 70s for Monday morning. Wow, that is really, really warm. And then it just is just going to be just toasty during the day. So not much relief here as far as your temperatures go in the Dakotas and the High Plains. Even the, say if you are in Michigan, yeah, you're getting temperatures in the 80s. I would like for you to do some homework for me. If you're living along the coast here of Lake Michigan, Take a boat ride across the lake and let me know what these temperatures are, or what you think about these. Those are some 40 degree temperatures during the day. Really cold over Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, uh, Lake Huron. Oh my God, Lake Superior, definitely on the chilly side. Then you get on land, it's just a whole different ball game. And that's going to continue for the next several days, especially, boy, by Tuesday and Wednesday next week, it is going to get really warm, just about anyone in the High Plains and the Deep South here of Texas, and that continues. Now, looking at the temperature anomaly forecast, this is the European Ensemble forecast, a blend of 51 different members, and not only that, we are looking at an, a five-day temperature anomaly average here. So what is it looking like here over the next five days? Below average down here, well above average over here, including for California and the de desert southwest, you're looking at temperatures anywhere between 10 to 20 degrees above normal. Yeah, the orange and the red shading there really denotes uh, high, really high temperature anomalies. And that's going to continue all the way through the next, say, four to nine days here. Look at this. Still really warm across much of the Great Lakes, the High Plains, and the Deep South. Well, not so much for the Deep South, but like Texas. Whereas California, welcome back to cooler weather. I could enjoy it all time long before we really get into the hot weather. It's usually in June and July. Usually August is the hottest time of the year here in the home weather office. And then as we go into uh, days 9 to 14, maybe some cooler weather up here eventually arriving for the Northern Plains and for the Pacific Northwest, remaining far fairly above average down there for the Deep South. Because of this, the Climate Prediction Center does have you all at a very likelihood at seeing temperatures above average, especially for the Great Lakes, for the Pacific, or for the... Uh, the northeastern U.S., that's what I was looking for. This darker red color here indicates an 80% chance that you will have above average temperatures through the 18th of May. Whereas the west here, it's the blue team back west and red team back east. And that's below average anomaly chances there over the four corners, the desert southwest, including for the Pacific Northwest and California. Let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy it, right? Because as we go into... The 8 to 14 day outlook, it is changing a little bit with above average still here for the southeast, for the mid-Atlantic, for the deep south, with above average anomalies over California. And if you're in Nevada, below average anomaly there over the four corners and the northern plains. Now, as far as your precipitation goes, the good news here is it's not going to be bone dry, okay? You're going to get some rain needed for your area, depending on exactly where you're at. That depends a whole lot. But right now, 
We are looking at anywhere between about a 40 to 50 percent chance of above average rainfall there across the northern Rockies and also for the Ozarks and the mid-Atlantic. With that continuing all the way into the 8 to 14 day period as you can see here, but only leaning above average. One more last thing that I wanted to share with you all in this video is how much rainfall you could see over the next 10 days from the European Ensemble forecast. This is again the blend of 51 different members and it is showing a lot of rainfall over Florida. The desert, or the, I always say desert southwest. Okay, desert southwest, you're looking at a little bit there. For the southeast, though, up to maybe six inches of rainfall. My friend Alex Balder that lives down here in southern Florida, you've been getting a lot of brush fires, which is really unfortunate, uh, even some wildfires. You're finally going to get some relief here over the next 10 days. You're looking at anywhere between about two to four inches of needed precipitation across that area. Versus California going to get a little bit of moisture over the next, in the short term, over the next two to three or the, the days, three to five outlook look a little wet for us and then it dries out again. But of course, it's in our dry season. But anyways, if you found this video very helpful, detailed and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, slap that bell icon and also slap the like button if you did enjoy today's video. Again, because I'm not going to be available Friday, Saturday, or Sunday here, maybe do a live stream for you all Saturday evening just for a couple of hours like I normally do. Um, I won't have really anything in the way of weather content out in, on my channel until we get into Monday and Tuesday next week because, of course, I got a busy weekend ahead getting ready for my graduation party, and so I've got to clean the house, got to get things all together for that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate your guys' support. But always, you can only do that if you do subscribe and hit the like button and also leave a comment in the section below. And I'll talk to you guys here on Saturday. Peace out.